In this video, we're going to cover Virtual Boy emulation on the PC version of RetroArch. Alright everyone, time for another quick RetroArch video. This time we are talking about the Virtual Boy. So Nintendo's Virtual Boy system was anything but a success, and playing one in the here and now can be quite a headache, so I typically prefer to use emulation when using the system. And thankfully it's an easy one to get set up, so let's go ahead and dive in. So to get started with Virtual Boy emulation on the PC version of RetroArch, you need to install the PC version of RetroArch if you have not done so already. I'll have links to my two guides on how to do so in the description below if necessary. Next, the only thing we're going to need for Virtual Boy emulation is Virtual Boy games, so hardware dumpers for the Virtual Boy do exist, otherwise you can resort to Google to search them up and find them. I don't really care which way you go about doing it, just don't ask me for illegal download links as I will not be providing them. But once you have your Virtual Boy games sourced, just add them to your hard drive anywhere you want to store them. So if you have a games folder, put them there. If you don't, make a games folder and put them there. But for my demonstration purposes, I have my RetroArch folder here on the desktop with the games folder that I'm going to put them in. There we go. And with the games in place, we just need to get the Virtual Boy core downloaded within RetroArch. So go ahead and get it booted up. Once RetroArch is booted up, head to the online updater on the main menu. Go to core downloader. Press the right arrow on your keyboard to scroll down to Nintendo, and we are looking for Nintendo Virtual Boy Beetle VB, so just press enter to download this. And once you have that core downloaded, you can back out to the main menu, and begin loading up Virtual Boy content. So one method of doing so is to head to load content, navigate to the directory where your games are stored, select the game, and it should automatically run. Now, personally, I'm not too fond of that method, so I'm going to make a games playlist instead. So, my favorite way of going about doing this on the PC version of RetroArch is to use the desktop menu. So, you can click the Show Desktop Menu button here, or press F5 on your keyboard to bring it up. Now, from here, right-click over in the Content Browser, New Playlist, type in Nintendo, space dash space, Virtual Boy. And then press enter, and now you'll be greeted with a new Nintendo Virtual Boy playlist on the left, complete with the system. Now in the main white box here, right click, add folder, navigate to where your games are stored. Select folder, core, Virtual Boy, where was that? Beetle VB, there we go. Database, Nintendo Virtual Boy, and then press OK, and now all of your Virtual Boy games that are in that folder will populate your playlist. From here, if you want to make the playlist look a little bit prettier within RetroArch, you could download the thumbnails. So you can click on Download Thumbnails by right-clicking on the Virtual Boy playlist entry. And as long as your games are named according to the internal database, typically the game name followed by a region code, it should find your Virtual Boy cover arts and apply them to your games. If for whatever reason you don't have a game pop up, it just says failed, you can manually add in box arts in PNG format by dragging them from your desktop onto the box art section. But once you have the playlist completed, you can just close out of the desktop menu. Select RetroArch, press F on your keyboard to make it full screen again. Now to get your new Virtual Boy playlist to show up on the left, click on Restart RetroArch in the main menu. And now we have a new Virtual Boy playlist entry here on the left, complete with all of our Virtual Boy games with cover art on the right if added. Now to play a game, all you need to do is select it and tell it to run. And there we go! Now we are playing Virtual Boy games on the PC version of RetroArch. But this being emulation, there are a number of things we could change to make the Virtual Boy emulation experience a little bit better instead of this eye-bleeding red. So to access our RetroArch quick menu, press F1 on the keyboard or the guide button on a controller. Scroll down to Core Options. And our first option is a 3D mode. So if you plan on using the Virtual Boy emulation with actual 3D glasses, you could choose a method of doing so here. So if you have an old 3D monitor that still has your glasses, and you can just set a method here. Otherwise, you can use anaglyphic 3D glasses and actually apply a 3D profile to it. So there you go. If you want to play your Virtual Boy games in 3D still, like you can do it. Otherwise, you could just leave this option off. But the Anaglyph preset lets you choose the color of your glasses here, so you can just choose them as needed. Next up, Palette. This is set to black and red by default, so this gives you that eye-bleeding look. But there's a number of different options you could choose, so you could go with just black and white to make it a little more, uh, less jarring on your eyes. Choose whichever one you like and run with it. I personally like to play them in black and white. Next up, right analog to digital. So... The Virtual Boy is an interesting controller, so if you want to map that second D-pad to your thumbstick, you could do so here, and you can invert 
the thumbsticks if needed. And our last option is CPU emulation. So this is set to fast by default. So if you're on a lower end PC, leave it there. But if you're on a higher end PC, you can change it to accurate to get better emulation quality. And with that, we've knocked all the Virtual Boy core options out of the way. So as always, if there's settings you want to have set for some games but not others, you can head out to Manage Core Options and save them as a Game Options file, so that way those options are only applied to that single game. Now one last option I want to talk about before we call this video is shaders. RetroArch has an extensive shader library, so if you want to enable them here, you can. And then begin loading them up. Just make sure you have downloaded them from the online updater. But there's a number of different options to choose from. There's no such thing as a perfect shader, so just... Check them all out, see which ones you like, and just run with them. So even though the Virtual Boy didn't run on a CRT, I still like using CRT Easy Mode with it, just because it just kind of makes it look more like a classic Game Boy. And it just looks good on most content that you would apply it to, so that's just my personal preference there. But once you find a shader that you like, just click on the Save button, and save it as a core preset, so that way every time you load up a Virtual Boy game, that is the option that will greet you. But that's going to do it as far as Virtual Boy emulation is concerned in the PC version of RetroArch. Again, super simple to get this one set up, and you could just not get the headaches and eye strain that the original system gave you. But as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your emulation projects up and running to your liking. But here at the end, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. Be sure you hit that like or dislike button, as well as that sub and notification bell, so you can see when new content comes live on the channel. So much coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place going and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers, y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for believing in what we do here and helping us keep it going. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.